Welcome to the Get Real Podcast, your high octane boost of full on reality therapy for personal, business, and investing success with your host, Ron Phillips, because somebody's got to tell it like it is. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Get Real Podcast. Ron Phillips and Heather Marchant here Mm -hmm. at your service. So good. So happy to be here. We have too much fun doing this, man. Why can't we just get paid to do this? <laughs> it's too fun. It's easy and fun. And when we first started doing this, man, I'd have like butterflies and you used to laugh that I'd get all dressed up. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I didn't even shave today. Too bad. Yeah. Well, listen, we're recording this on a Friday. That's right. Anyway, marketing on social media is fun. Yes. yes. I think if you care about what other people think of you, it's like social media is just a bad place for you to be. I just think you probably shouldn't even have an account. I think it's good that it's mostly under your stuff so that I don't see a lot of the comments. You've told me about a couple and I'm like, man, this makes me upset more than it should. <laughs> Yeah, and none of it bothers me anymore. I kind of get a chuckle. So today we thought we'd share. I sent this over to Heather and I was like, this is hysterical because, you know, we run ads and, you know, we post a lot of videos on all of the social media sites. And it is so funny what people say. And then they just like, this one actually got into a pretty good little debate, which I like. And I thought, you know, Let's actually have this debate and discuss it on the podcast. So we'll see if this was a good idea or not. But I thought this was hysterical. So I'm going to read the original comment. This is just on a video of me talking about the four returns of real estate and why people would want to invest in real estate. I mean, it's pretty innocuous, really. I mean, I didn't say anybody was an idiot. There was no inflammatory language. It just said, this is the best thing. And here's why. Yeah. Right. The facts. Okay. So. This is the comment. It's amazing that these real estate wannabe gurus never talk about what happens when the renters stop paying. Well, already he doesn't listen to any. <laughs> yes. I, don't any, I don't know how many videos there are on Instagram where he commented on this that talk about renters not paying. Anyway, whatever. In 50 years. Oh, wait, wait, wait. How great is it then? In 50 years, Coke never missed their dividend payment. Neither did Con Edison or many other blue chip companies. On paper, the quote cash flow real estate sounds great until a renter stops paying. Like Mike Tyson said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Now, I read that and I thought it was funny. I didn't even reply. I just thought, man, that's kind of funny. And I like the Mike Tyson quote. So good on you for what what is this? The Mad Yelper is this dude's name. The Mad. The mad yelper. So good for you, dude. I like Mike Tyson too. And I love the quote. So well played. But then this gets interesting, Heather, because yep, it's Robbie, who is now one of my great friends. I don't know you, yep, it's Robbie, but whoever you are, if you listen (laughs) to the show, I hope you like email in so that we can be buds. This is so good. Yes. I didn't come. Do you have these pulled up, Heather? I do. Yes. So funny. Yes. So he responds and says, Lehman Brothers was also a blue chip company. You can't cherry pick examples. He should have just put mic drop and then just shut up. But he didn't. Yeah, He didn't. Because the mad yelper. (laughs) I like that you're going to play the mad yelper and I'm going to play. Yeah, I I like I kind of feel like I should play the mad yelper because do it. It's such a creative name. Yep, He is yelping. Like if you guys have ever heard a dog. I had this dog when I was a kid. I don't know if I've told the story or not, but I bought this Basenji with my paper out money. And a Basenji is a dog it cannot bark. Because my dad didn't want a dog that barked. I did not know this story. Okay. Wow. So, really quickly, people, because this has nothing to do with this, other than Yelp. These dogs, they can't bark, but it doesn't mean that they can't make noise. This dog... (laughs) This dog made a word. I think barking is better than what this dog made the sound. Now, I love this dog, so it didn't make any difference to me, but I don't think anybody else liked the yiping and the yelping. So our dog was the great yelper. And 
if I'd have put it together, I would have called him the mad yelper. Um, so so that's what I'm thinking of when I see this dude. And when I read, it's this little Basenji with a corkscrew tail that's in a cage yelping. So yeah, it's that's an awful I mean. sound. That barkless sound is awful. It is horrible. So that's what I picture when the mad yelper starts to comment. And so here it goes. Agreed. Now your turn to address the issues when a renter doesn't pay. I'm listening. Because <laughs> I'm listening. So I'm listening. Yup, it's Robbie does not back down. I know. Love I love it. that he stays in. He says, are you going to play Yup, it's Robbie? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, I like, yeah, I like this. It. Yup, it's Robbie. Yup, it's Robbie says, just like you do when you buy a stock, you do your research. Your cash flow calculations factor in vacancy and expenses. You do your research on the tenant laws in the area. And of course, you also screen your tenants. So we should have him as a guest. This is so good. I should, yeah. Yup, it's Robbie, if you're listening, <laughs> we'll have please, you please reach out. This is the greatest. I just sat and watched this happen. I didn't have the comment. Keep going, Heather. Sometimes a tenant doesn't pay, but that's like a stock having a bad quarter. I'd have to evict a tenant. But when you factor in the mortgage pay down, sorry, one second, I have to go to the next. Oh, man, I lost my place. The mortgage pay down. The building was still profitable for that year. Are you caught up? I'm trying to find it. Of course, you don't invest in real estate if you don't have cash reserves that allow you to think long term. Even if it took a loss for a year compared to the downside risk of a stock. Yup, it's Robbie. I got to hand it to you. That was a very well thought out and crafted response. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, the mad Yelper returns. He's not had it enough yet. Understood and appreciate the feedback. Wow. He stopped yelping. Yeah. And he's, you know, he's like, okay, cool. Different strokes for different folks. To me personally, it's a headache. I don't think the Mad Yelpers ever owned a rental property. No. So I don't think he knows what he's talking about. But to him personally, it's a headache. He doesn't know about it, but it's a headache. I'd rather own 20 dividend paying stocks and do absolutely nothing and just collect the dividend. Cool. Hey, I'm all for you. Yeah. Now, yup, it's Robbie. Okay, so he says, I wouldn't tell you not to. It's certainly less work for less return. I, that's like a highlight, right? <laughs> <laughs> no problem. You just have less work and you get less money. Hey, it's okay. It isn't. For, listen, making more return isn't for everybody. So it's cool. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Isn't that how life goes? He says, I split the difference. I do the work of acquiring and building or renovating the properties, then hand a master lease off to a company that handles everything. Once my properties are up and running, I just get an email every month that my money is coming in. And then I love that he like stops and he's like, oh, I can't, I missed something. So he comments again and says, by the way, they also take on the risk of non-payment. They pay me, the tenant pays them. It's awesome. Okay, this is the first time I comment. I'm going to play the role of me. <laughs> I'm going to play the role of me now. I say, yep, it's Robbie has this right. No one is saying don't buy stock. No one is saying real estate is for everyone. It's not. Stocks have two returns possible, appreciation like real estate and a dividend like real estate. Most don't have both. And if they do, they do neither well. I've never seen a stock paid for by someone else, however, and I don't know of any tax benefit for owning them. The returns in real estate done correctly dwarf the stock market. Yes, tenants sometimes stop paying. Yes, tenants sometimes damage properties. And the returns still dwarf the stock market. It's not even close. Is this when he, this is when he says, true, you can't cherry pick? Yeah. Okay, well, this yeah. is the Mad Yelper. I can't do the Mad, mad yelper. yelper. You're the Mad Sorry, I'm back to Mad Yelper. Maybe I should do this. I'll just, okay. <laughs> Now I'm the mad Yelp. Ron, Sorry, I just Ron turned his hat around. <laughs> I just turned my hat around. I'm the mad Yelper now. Yep, it's Robbie. True. You can't cherry pick. I'll give you five that isn't going away. You guys can in your mind think of what you're going to think about when he says this, because I already know what I'm thinking about. He says, yeah, Coke, JPM, Pfizer, American Express and McDonald's. All I'm saying is I'd rather take my chances with a company like this paying their dividends on time versus a tenant. A tenant can get divorced, lose a job, get cancer. Don't want the headache or aggravation. 
Now, the Mad Yelper still comments because he's commenting to me on my other one. So don't get lost in this now, guys. He's catching up to the, you know, he's finally, I don't know how long it took. We should probably look in there and see how long it took him to come up with the fact that there are five that aren't ever going away, which is hysterical, by the way. Yeah. Pfizer could get sued tomorrow and get destroyed. Yep, exactly. Could happen. And if anybody wants to know what can happen to a strong company, just take a look at what's happened to Target and take a look at yep. what's happened to, what is it, Budweiser? Yeah. And all you have to, is, yep. I mean, all you have to do is say something stupid. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. You never know what someone's personal life is going to come out in the news and then boom, explode. All right. The mad Yelper dwarf the stock market? Really? It's the exact opposite. Apple, Amazon, Google, Tesla, Nike, Starbucks. I mean, he goes on. They're all millionaire making stocks. Yes. Yes. If you bought McDonald's back. That's right you know, time. Right when they started McDonald's. Definitely hit a home run. And if you picked out of all of the stocks, if you picked Tesla way back in the day, good on you. My guess is, however, the mad Yelper, that you didn't pick Tesla way back then because we probably wouldn't be having stupid commentary on an Instagram post if you had. Yeah, true. And you know what, Ron? That's one thing on our list of stocks versus real estate is you can be successful in any real estate market. Whereas the stock market, the timing is it. I mean, you have to buy low, sell high. So Yep. And you have no control, which this guy doesn't understand. But besides that, the biggest part is no headache. I can deal with stock pullbacks, and that's good. I'm glad he can. The great ones come back like the stocks I previously named, and I cannot deal with the deaf best tenants. I don't know what that means. Yeah. And or 2 a.m. phone calls that they have no heat. You're not getting it. People. Oh, I, I'm guessing deadbeat. he meant to say deadbeat. 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 Tenants. Probably us. Probably deadbeat. But deaf best works too. <laughs> I guess... He hasn't caught on to the fact that you can have somebody manage this and you don't have to deal with any of the things he just talked about. Mm -hmm. And the pullbacks in the real estate market, when the pullback actually happens, we're still making three different returns, Heather. Yep. What you got, (laughs) bad Yelper? When you get a stock pullback, you got nothing or maybe a really crappy, wait, I'm sorry, I'm me now. Or you got a really tiny dividend? Yeah. Uh, Because I'm not sure what else you got, buddy. Um, it really isn't fair. There's not as much. Uh, yup, it's Robbie. It's, it's back to me now. Some dude. I should have gotten in on this party. Yeah, I know. You should have really commented on here. I would have had fun. Okay, so he says, I have a high school friend. No, oh, this is Mad Yelper. Sorry. I have a high school friend who just sold his rental property in Orlando. It was paid off. Two bedroom condo, 300000 Took the 300000 and put it into a savings account getting 5.1%. That's over fifteen thousand a year, and he still keeps the three hundred thousand. He keeps the three hundred thousand, Heather. Wow, this is crazy. Follow the numbers because it's too quick. He was getting fifteen hundred a month from the tenant. Then take the property taxes he is saving on selling the property and the repairs in the condo is basically a wash. And he sits on a couch all day, and first of every month he collects the interest, fifteen thousand dollars a year. That's fantastic. Now. Take that story and imagine someone who has 10 properties like that, sells all of them and collects 5.1%. That's $150,000 doing absolutely nothing. Bam. That's true. That's true. So what did I say? Sorry. What you described is a horrible deal. I agree with you. And you made the decision that all real estate deals are like what your buddy just did. Yeah. But that's just not the way. It's not the way it is. And Heather, there's a few things that he left out there. He's trying to compare cash flow to dividend, and he's omitting the other three returns. Yeah. and I don't think he understands them, honestly. No, no. Clearly, he does not. Yeah. I think he also thinks that if you buy a piece of real estate, the 300000 is just gone somehow, magic. Yeah, that's true. If you put it in the bank, it's there. If you buy a stock, it's there. But if you buy real estate, it's not there somehow. Yeah. I'm going to pause and say something cool. I had a call with a client this week. That their son is going on like a, he's doing a missionary service and he's saved up money, worked as a teenager and has money to invest to buy, has a down payment on a house. The missionary service will cost him about $400 a month. 
and that's the cash flow coming in from the property. So he'll have his down payment, the cash flow coming in, he can live off of that. And then when the missionary service is over, that asset has grown in value. Typically, the tenant's been paying down the mortgage and he's just been living off the dividend. There it is. There it is. Boom. I don't know if you guys are done with Yup, It's Robbie and the mad Yelper, but Yup, It's Robbie is back. I like this part. This is, there's no such thing, right? Yes. Sorry, guys. I have this all in different screenshots. So there's no such thing as a company that isn't going away. Even the shadiest investment advisor would tell you that. Again, no one is telling you not to invest in stocks. I do, but the 7% returns from those blue chip stocks won't make anyone rich. You'll barely beat inflation before, in all caps, you get taxed at long-term capital gains at best. The small returns have a place in your strategy, just like a savings account. <laughs> Sorry, I made you laugh. A savings account has a place, but those returns don't compare to real estate. Man, I love this guy. Yep, it's Robbie. Just a shout out again. Yep. He continues, again, you can completely avoid the hassle of dealing with tenants. It shrinks your cash flow but I decided it was worth it as I started to scale. Now I literally don't even know the names of my tenants or anything else about them. Yep. I'm sorry. The mad Yelper returns, not yelping this time. He says, yep, it's Robbie. Now you've said something I would be interested in. Holy cow. <laughs> we, have, we have broken through. And I say we, but not really. This is all yep, it's Robbie. Yeah, true. That made this happen, right? So- I said, oh, no, no, I didn't say what you said. said. said, Now you said something I would be interested in. You deal with the headaches and you take your cut for that. I don't have a problem with that. (laughs) Well, yeah, (laughs) that's what property managers do, dude. (laughs) And there's a lot of, this is what they do all day, every day. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So anyway, we thought we would share with you just, and this happens like all the time on Instagram and Facebook. And I think I have a TikTok account, Heather. But I don't even know how to get in there. So I really don't ever see the comments in there. But I'm assuming there's stupid comments in there, too. But don't get excited, everybody. I've not done a dance video yet. Although on our call the other day, everybody was suggesting that I do the latest dance craze yeah. on TikTok just to get some, you know, I think it would work pretty well. Get me out there dancing. Yeah, true. I would have a blast doing that. I have to say, Ron, I think another favorite of this whole thread is that someone else a week later after this whole conversation was finished comes in and says, that poor guy's out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> the mad Yelper. <laughs> well, listen, we made fun of the mad Yelper, but if you somehow got a link and let's start to listen to the show and you landed on here, what you should take away from this is not that we've made fun of you, but yes, that there is an answer. There's a 12 step program for you so that you can get out of yes. this thought pattern that you have. Probably some really well intentioned human told you all of these impressive lies about real estate and someone told you impressive lies about the stock market because I guarantee you that with the ups and downs in the market, the only thing that you've really gotten a consistent return on is the measly, and I do mean measly, little dividend that you're getting from those blue chip stocks that you bought. But like Yup, It's Robbie said, there's a place for that stuff. Nothing wrong with it. You know, but don't hit a video where you know nothing about the content and say something stupid. Because when you do that, like you know something, it's fine to ask a legitimate question because then people will answer yeah. your question in a kind way. But I'd like to just shout out to Yup, it's Robbie. He kept his cool, yeah, defended his position, never said anything derogatory to anyone. You're right. I'd like to meet you, Yup, it's Robbie. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff right there. I agree. And I thought it was disagreeing that was also respectful. And I think that's hard to find sometimes when people disagree on things. So disagreement is an important part of society. So it is. And these days, that's why I don't get super upset when people make comments like that. I just figure they really don't know what they're talking about. And it's not personal. When they make comments about my appearance, it's personal. And I still think it's hilarious. (laughs) Because. Because if I actually cared, I could just click on and I would just giggle that they're the ones who are making comments about other people's appearance. Anyway, that's true. 
I have no idea if this was helpful to anybody, Heather, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I think having it in someone else's from someone else's perspective and someone else's words is really powerful. And I think for me, it reminds me of all my clients that comment and like are involved in like our Facebook community or kind of going out and explaining your position rather than it just coming from you or me, Ron. Man, it's powerful. So don't be afraid to stand up for your position and how you feel because, Ron, you tried, but because it's your Instagram page, I think it just went nowhere, right? Because this other guy was in there commenting, Uh who knows? Maybe the Yelper is going to actually get in the game and change his financial future because Robbie (laughs) was able to articulate real estate in a, a light, it shed a light on it that maybe he hadn't considered before. And I think that can be life changing. So I think it was a reminder to me to not just shrink, I guess, in front of someone who disagrees with me. Yeah. It's powerful. Especially when I look at what, what I've noticed in real estate, in politics, religion, you name it, all of the things that make people, you know, start to cringe just a little bit at dinner parties is people come in with a really confident stance on something, but it only takes a couple of legitimate questions before those things Mm -hmm. usually break apart. Because typically all they have to talk about is a talking point from someone else that they heard, which is literally what this guy, it is his entire platform completely crumbled when someone just explained to him in a very patient way the benefits of this thing that he was you know, being derogatory about. And I I think that's a pretty good lesson in every aspect of life. If you're, you know, if somebody wants to argue with you about politics, just don't get into the emotional piece of it. Yeah. Don't get your feelings hurt. Just explain the situation. Yeah. And, you know, there's crazy people out there you can't help and that's okay. But, you know, we can try. So anyway. So powerful to remember that. I think it's the positives of social media. So. Yeah. And if you're going to go on social media, you got to grow a spine. You just have to because it gets ugly out there. I'm growing one. It takes a little bit of work for me. Yeah. It literally, I don't think you can. Yeah, you probably could. I don't know how, but you probably could get me, but I don't know how yet. Mm -hmm. But not dogging on real estate. I'll just laugh. (laughs) Not dogging on how I look, then I'll just laugh. But yeah, I'm sure there's something. Somebody will probably hit a I'll just probably delete their comment if they do. Yeah, true. They hit a nerve. I'll probably just delete their comment if they get me because it isn't going to help anybody else. Anyway, I hope this was helpful to somebody out there who's going to start an Instagram page or and or wants to know how to combat people who tell them that the stock market is God's gift to the, you know, new world. True. But hey, if you want to send us any ideas of what you want us to talk about on here, or if you're, yep, it's Robbie, email us at invest at rpcinvest.com. And if you know, yep, it's Robbie, have him reach out or the Yelper. If you know the mad Yelper, I'd like to talk to the Yelper too. Maybe we can interview the Yelper on the show. True. Either way. This is me looking up. Yep, it's Robbie. All right. Until next time, everybody. Get out there and make something happen. This has been the Get Real Podcast. To subscribe and for more information, including a list of all episodes, go to getrealestatesuccess.com.